All right. Long, long Pioneer Day today. Long stream in general. First of three decks that we're diving into today. So, Seasons Pass. For those that are not familiar, this is a card advantage engine. Return any number of cards with different converted mana costs from your graveyard to your hand. You then put Seasons Past on the bottom of its owner's library. So, Seasons Past, along with Dark Petition here, allows us to create some sustained card advantage as we move into the mid to late game. So this card says search your library for a card and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Then if there are two or more instant sorcery cards in your graveyard, add triple black to your mana pool. So seasons past, our dark position here gives us a little bit of a toolbox to find, uh, you know, Languish, Underworld Connections, Murderous Rider, Last Hope, Read the Bones, Vraska's Contempt, different utility cards like that. And then seasons past, can pick up Dark Petition and whatever other cards you have that you've cast so far in a game. And then you can Dark Petition to fetch the Seasons Pass back up out of your deck. So you basically create kind of this endless loop of value in the late game. Um, we have just typical black interaction removal. We got Fatal Push, Thought Seize, Abrupt Decay, Assassin's Trophy. Um, we've got Tireless Tracker as an additional way to generate card advantage and another threat. And then our deck here today actually contains a combo kill in it. So we've got four copies of Dread Presence here that says whenever a swamp enters the battlefield under your control, you either draw a card and lose a life or deal two damage to any target and you gain two life. So we've got that along with a singleton copy of Scape Shift in our deck that we can find with Dark Petition. So if we Scape Shift with Dread Presence out, we can fetch Urborg and a bunch of lands and dome our opponent for a bunch of damage. Kind of like a build our own Valakut in, in Pioneer in a roundabout way. So Dread Presence is kind, it's kind of kind of neat. Like it's a card that can generate card advantage on its own while also giving us access to this combo kill by including a, a Miser Scape Shift. Hey Jojo, thanks for the quarter of a year. Welcome back. Happy Friday. Yeah, yeah, the, one of the struggles that this archetype has is definitely being able to close once you've locked the game up, and Dread Presence with Scapeship giving you, giving you a way to combo kill. Sounds appealing. Pretty easy mulligan here. Is it? Nah, I'm gonna YOLO on the draw. I have 26 lands in my deck. What are the odds? What are the odds I see three lands in three turns? We're gonna, do, we're gonna do some math. I should know. I should probably know this calculation offhand. So on the draw, I'm gonna get three draws plus a scry is four. So I'm gonna get four looks. I'm looking for two lands. So I am 65% to hit two lands by turn three. This hand's pretty good if I hit two lands by turn three, right? Yeah, I'm going to keep it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Swish. All right, step one. Morning, Jedi. Do I have a cry of Canarium in our 75? We do. Okay, that's good. Cry, cry, and Kalitas. You know, not having Kalitas in our main deck might be a punt. That card, that card's real good. Hey, Tuntingy, thanks for the 10 months. Welcome back. Uh, 
Pretty sure we're just killing Knight here. Hey, morning, Rodford. Thanks for the 10 months. Welcome back. Yep. We are... We are the 35%, chap. Hashtag never lucky. Hey, good to have you around, hostage. Hopefully still see you lurking around afterwards. I appreciate the 10 months. I'm just gonna go ahead and kill this. They can pick it back up, but... Maybe I'm supposed to like wait till end. No, like, even if I do it at end of turn, they can still pick it back up, right? All right, and hey, the fact that they have an Urborg in play actually means this Fabled Passage is worth an untapped mana, basically. Which is a fun interaction. The problem here is I would bet, I would bet they have a Murderous Rider or something like that in their hand. Yeah, Super Nintendo Wrinkle. Did not, did not have time to stumble. Honestly, even if we didn't stumble this game, we're probably still dead. Cry and Kali Toss are important here. Languish is fine. Underworld Connections isn't very good. my thoughts to you. I don't really have that many cards for this matchup. The, the opponent's deck is the type of deck that tends to give control decks like this fits. Their recursive threats are very difficult for us to answer in a one-for-one -one fashion. Legion's End. Yeah, Legion's End could be good. Cry. Cry fills a similar role. I don't know. The black deck, I think, is still fine, but it's definitely been less less prevalent since they banned Copter, which makes sense. I think this is a keep. Fatal push, guard advantage thing, lands. Hey, it's more than some places, Tobias. Happy Friday. No play here is good for us. So, I think I play Tracker, even though it gives them a chance to kill it before I can make clues because I want to be able to play this Braska on four. I don't know, maybe that's wrong because I have the Fatal, because I have the Fabled Passage. Yeah. Feels bad, man. Fraska doesn't seem very good in this deck. Like, we don't have a lot of things that we want to sacrifice to her. Uh, I listened to most of the debates. They weren't, like, my primary focus, though. Like, had other stuff going on. Catching up on stuff around the house, putting decks together. Yeah, the fact that I was impatient with the tireless tracker might cost us. She is she is gonna gain a bunch of life, you're not wrong. Yep, 
You've caught them all, Marty? Gotta catch them all, gotta catch them all, yeah. I'd want to play Questing Beast over Vraska. What problem are you trying to solve with Questing Beast? Those cards, those cards fundamentally do very different things. I think I'm like petitioning for Read the Bones here. Um, huh? Oh, we put the tree up already. I actually posted a picture of it in the subs discord at one point. The stream deck are updated. Probably not. is now I'm gonna discard with the wrinkle hit how does how does that impact my decision here I think I'm going bottom top and then since we hit the land the plan is probably petition for languish next turn We're taking seven here, possibly eight if they have a straw. Yep. Moments. Moments before the accident, chat. Moments. Moments before the accident. Our opponent could have won this game by a lot. Instead, they chose to get greedy. Goodbye, friends. They should have they should have just played out one night and played around Languish here. They would have only played one night out. They could have kept the night in play through the Languish, and then I'd be in trouble, but they got greedy and they got punished. Sure. Taking six here down to three. How does this deck feel so far? Like I played one and a half games with it. Maybe it's wrong to have been the scape shift since I have Dread Presence in hand. Rune looking good here. Leave swamps in my deck for now. We're gonna wait on. Oh wow, that's actually a huge punish. Okay, yeah, we're keeping that though. Sounds great. Um, okay, so leaving a forest in for our Nissa is worthwhile. We're gonna wait to contempt an instant speed because I would like to. Um, or I'd like them to not have another wrinkle to play out. So like if they have another wrinkle and I do it on my turn, they can play it right away, which is not ideal. Jump to five here. Dread Presence can hopefully help us stabilize our life total here a little bit too, which is great. I believe their last card is Fatal Push. They haven't discarded one yet, right? No, so. Okay, this game's probably over. So I unfortunately do not have a forest to go get. 
Because I already grabbed both of them like a big dumb stupid. But I do have I do have the swamp. Which lets me say, hey, hit you for two, gain two. Flip my Nissa over. And then let's make a 4-4. Four -four. Yeah. yeah, I think that that whole game was decided by the fact that like my opponent decided to be aggressive with their knight instead of uh, holding the second one back. Yeah, I don't I don't control the Twitch notification, Citra, so I'd encourage you to file a bug report if your Twitch notifications aren't working. If you follow me on Twitter or if you join the subs discord, I post on Twitter and I tag everyone in the subs discord when I go live. So both of those notifications I have control over. But when Twitch when Twitch is foobar, there is nothing I can do. The lack of a ritual assert in the Dark Petition package might also be a mistake for this deck. I do also have a calendar on my website. That's true too. But if you want, if you want the little pop up, um, Discord or getting push notifications on Twitter are good options. Although I tweet a lot, so maybe Twitter's less good. Discord, the only time we at every to everyone tag is when I have surveys for people to fill out or um, or when I go live. So usually it's just a go live notification each day. Yes, consistency is key in this business, in my experience. Wow, they're playing Dread Wanderer too. Actually, seems really good. Just more, more recursive one mana things. Gross. Um, I think I'm just taking Scrap Peep Scrounger. I haven't been doing an at when I change formats anymore because I'm tweeting deck list now. I think I'm just playing this tapped and passing. I think my plan is to like Liliana next turn is hey look a distraction. Then we get up to languish the following turn. Yeah, plus one's okay. It's very possible I should have shocked in this so I could abrupt decay this. Hey, Mark. Thanks for keeping me around. I appreciate it. Last month number 12, so let's get you started to go with that shield. Hope you're having a wonderful start to your weekend. No, the... The Fabled Passage is going to be a painless untapped land later, in addition to having value with the Abrupt Decay. It's like there's a there's a few reasons to... This is, this is in fact, the patented distraction, Lily. I'm actually just dead, though, right? Yeah, right. We're actually just dead. Again, just like great example of why control decks like this have a hard time against the opponent's archetype. When they had Smuggler's Copter, we had an even harder time. But like their their recursive threats just way too much for us there. And maybe maybe I should have shocked in to like abrupt decay the knight. But honestly, even if I do that, I'm up a couple points of life. The the Scrap Heap Scrounger and Recursive Threats and the Mutavolts are just going to like put us in the ground most likely. Hey, Stigal, thanks for the two-thirds of a year. Welcome back. Checking in from YouTube. Thanks for keeping me around. Glad you enjoyed the YouTube stuff. Bottom A Thoughtsies here. I'm going to bottom this Fresca. I don't actually think she's very good in this deck.
instead of me telling you you're right, Storm, or you're wrong, Stormbirth Dragon, tell me why you're right. What problem do you envision that card solving in the deck that we're playing? Well, that's what I always like to see when I cast a Thought Seize. Ten, ten points of burn. That's, that's my favorite thing when I cast a Thought Seize. <laughs> Yikes. All right, well, we're half dead. All right, gain one, I guess. Morning, damage show. So this will definitely be a game where we wait till four to play Tireless Tracker so we can guaranteed make some clues with it. Fabled Passage should mean we get to make two clues, which is nice. So they'll, they'll get to kill our thing, but it'll draw two cards. So they'll spend a card killing our divination, basically. I mean, the answer to your question, Stormbat Dragon, is like everything in Magic. It depends. So, like, in some specific subset of matches, yeah, you're right. That card's great. In other specific subsets of matches or against other draws out of other decks, it's not great at all. No, no idea. Like a mosh. It depends is the correct answer just about any... No, that, that's not true at all. It's the correct answer to interesting questions. So they denied us a clue by spending another Wild Slash here, which kind of feels like a win to me. Like, I'm up another card. I'm just up a card out of their hand instead of being up a card out of my deck. So I feel like that's kind of a wash. There are, there are a lot of questions that have very clean, concise answers. Like, is climate change real? Yes. Do vaccines cause autism? No. Is the shuffler rigged? Almost certainly. So a lot of these questions have very clear, concise answers. Adidas, thank you for the three quarters of a year of support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. I have some money for you, courtesy of Jeff Bezos. Thanks for keeping me entertained on this 10-hour road trip. That's a long road trip. 10's a lot of hours. I will choose to believe, believe in the scribe problem regardless of truth. Ain't that? Because it's the American way. What's a pioneer deck you love that I can watch later? Blue Red Eldrazi is my, my pick for favorite deck in Pioneer at the moment still. We scry first. Take a peekaboo. I would love a tireless tracker. I'm also not going to play the tracker out this turn, so I'm just going to pass. All right. Oh. I don't have. I don't have. I don't have time for that this morning. And yeah, fuck off. Jeff pretends to have a contentious relationship with Watsy, so we believe him when he says the shuffler's not rigged. 
<laughs> That's like, that is like Hillary conspired with the Russians so the deep state could elect Trump and then him impeach him level deep. That, that, that's... Yeah, that's impressive. Wake up. Wake up, sheeple. <laughs> the under the old double triple mole. <laughs> oh, that's great. We're on, we're on to you, Hogland. All right, I want Kali Toss again. Um, again, it kind of feels like I don't have many good cards to sideboard in here. Uh, maybe I want this Elder Spell just because they have Chandras. They probably have four Chandras in their big red deck. I guess maybe Vraska's fine. Maybe. You gotta bury that liability three decks deep. Something like that. I should have assumed that this deck was going to be a steaming dumpster fire because um, because this deck like moved up the deck queue at record pace just like a ton of people like put shillings and dollars towards bumping it to the top after it got added and Twitch chat Twitch chat never loves decks that much that are good. Huh. I think I just take the lightning strike here since I have Dub's Fatal Push. I was going to make an argument, but I've spent a lot of money to see Beam Kim played repeatedly. <laughs> uh, there's a scape shift because of Dread Presence. Dread Dread Presence, Urborg Scape Shift gives us a pseudo combo kill. Gotta gotta jump through some hoops to build your Malika in this format. All right, so I'm actually going to take a hit from this again because I plan to Fatal Push Karizev this turn. So that way I can read the bones next turn. Military coup, Jeff. This, listen, Hoglandia is not a democracy. Hoglandia is a dictatorship, and I'm the dick, okay? That's how, that's how this works. For those of you that are new around here. Who's the tater? Declan's the tater. Okay, you went for both of those. Uh, I actually top beated an SCG Open with Abzan Seasons Pass, but it was, it was built a little bit differently than this. So the Seasons Pass deck I played in Standard had Sylvan Advocate as a way to have early plays and also create roadblocks. So like the way this deck is constructed to fit in this Dread Presence package means it doesn't have much early board presence at all. I think I'm actually gonna kill their thing and I'm gonna turn this fatal push into just a gain two I could maybe like peep their hand and like try and grab a removal spell before I play dread presence but like they're already through a lightning strike I don't know there's a good chance that like the that mode would just miss or they would just cast their spell in response and then it would miss more likely eggs are good thanks for the 19 months welcome back Snack Robber, thanks for the third of year. I appreciate you keeping me around. Yep. <sighs> 
So this is this is a choice. Do I contempt Vraska now, or do I shock in the overgrown tomb and petition for? I could shock in the overgrown tomb and petition for a petition for a murderous writer. That cost me four life is the issue. So I think I'm just supposed to contempt because of how aggressively slanted their deck is. They'll, like, they'll likely be playing something this next turn that I can petition for murderous writer anyways. And this saves me the two points on the shock. Let's uh, cast the Dread Presence. This probably eats it, but I don't want to, like, not use my mana this turn. Maybe they just have a bunch of lands in their hand. Lightning Strike, sure. If they don't play a threat again next turn, I can Dark Petition for Lily out of the Last Hope and roll her back and pick Dread Presence back up. Which is nice. Listen, Marty. Optimism. Gotta be, gotta be optimistic. I'm so confused. What is going on? Oh, maybe they thought Roast was an instant. Any, any card of my choosing, you say? Yeah, now, now we do Liliana and eat the Loyalist to start. Hopefully they don't bang Liliana next turn. Glory, Glory B would not be good for us. That's a, that's a concession. All right, y'all. Probably just had two lands in their hand and were tilted off the face of the planet. Fatso, thanks for the 25 months. I appreciate that. Thanks for keeping me around. You can't bang Lily. Chandra got a cease and desist for that. How's the deck felt so far? Kinda clunky and lacking board presence. Maybe presence is the wrong word because we have four copies of presence. So maybe, maybe that's the, maybe that's the wrong, wrong jargon. Now I think the flexibility to take uh, the flexibility to take their creatures like Bone Crusher and Glorybringer is worth the life loss. Is why I left the uh, those cards in. All right, I'm into this whole no place thing. It's good for me. Goblin Ramble Master. Yikes. Uh, 
Maybe I should have played this to hold up trophy. We hadn't seen Rabble Master yet, though. Could probably assume it was there based on the rest of what they've been doing. You think I have to trophy that? Which, like, sucks because it gives them five mana next turn. Dread. Dread Prez is just incredibly clunky. Basically, if you want to try and get value out of this card, it's a five drop. You want to try and do something with it before it just dies. I have two of them here, so I am just going to jam one on four, I think. Do I read the bones now that I, now that I drew a languish? Yeah, I'm going to read the bones. Should have read the bones before I played my land. We're going to draw a tap land and feel sad now. Decay, Grasp. I'm going to bottom the Decay. I'm going to keep the Grasp because it can kill a dragon in, in a pinch. I did I did bottom the Decay, I swear. I swear, please listen to me. Truth, the truth is out there, sheeple. The shuffler's as rigged as the earth is flat. I think I'm high enough that I want to draw a card with this. High as a kite. He's dead, Jim. You've killed my cantrip. Slow start like this is good for us. In fact, they didn't have a follow-up after that Rabble Master is huge game. Hanweir Garrison. If you own, if you both own and control battlements and garrison, exile them and meld them into writhing township. Yeah. Yeah, that that preview is not super useful. That's why I zoomed in to maybe maybe make you be able to see it. Alas, alas, our technology was not prepared for meld cards. We do not have the technology. Roasted, baby. What was that preview for ants? Yep, basically. Uh, actually, I should have prep decay this, right? Because the grass could kill something bigger. Are you ready? Bone Crusher's ready. This game's probably pretty over. Yikes. I do, I do love me some Nissa Vastwood Seer. I hope this card's super playable, this format. She so gets to flip right on over. And then she pluses to draw a card, and she minuses to make an elemental. So I'd like to make a friend, please. That, that's another thing, too. Like... Is Seasons Past even necessary in this deck? Like, you sit here and, like, look at what we're doing and how we're winning the game. And it's like, well, we're kind of we're kind of going to win the game regardless, right? I don't, I don't really need Seasons Pass. I guess, I guess it's just a one-of, right? 
Hey, we could scape shift kill them this game. Which it also looks like we don't really need. Like we were we were probably gonna win this game without scape shifting them. It's been a while since you did, still enjoying I I am mastermind. I think most of Magic's formats are in okay spots right now. Even even standard, standard seems okay. There's some miserable things in most of the decks. There's some miserable things in most formats. I feel like the types of matchups in this format where you want the type of card advantage that Seasons Pass provides, you would rather... You, like... You, you really are playing into counter spells, which is not ideal. So like the grindy decks in this format currently that people have been playing are decks filled with counter spells. And like trying to cast five and six mana cards against the counter spell deck is not stellar most of the time. It feels like the combo of this deck is clunky that when it works, you'd probably be winning anyways. Yeah, I think that's probably accurate, Dale. Like that, that last game, for example, we're certainly winning without Dread Presence and Scape Shift. Like pulling, pulling the curve down and like being a Sylvan Advocate deck, like this deck wasn't standard, probably the better direction to go in. Sure. Yeah, I, I agree, Marty. I think that card's underplayed currently. I think it's very reasonable. It's, act it's actually a mirror. That's hilarious. Our chunky, our chunky combo is probably great in the mirror. I'm going to play the Fabled Passage here, so when they play Love Struck Beast, I can crack the Fabled Passage and Fatal Push it. Yeah, I think that's a different deck, though, Mazer. I definitely, I definitely think, like, green, black, fair stuff is a fine, fine thing to be doing in the format. But it's also just, like, fundamentally different than what this is. This is a really good draw. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any control over the bots, Time Lord. Feels, feels dead, man. Again, like, it's, like, do, do I, do I pass the turn and do nothing? Or do I, like, play this and, like, 
clench and hope to fade a removal spell. I think, I think I'm supposed to play this and clench and hope to fade a removal spell. This card feels like a clunkier tireless tracker in a format where tireless tracker is already a little bit too clunky. Yeah, yeah, they have they have a revolt on demand, so like if they had a fatal push, they can kill this. You'd have passed, you could have traded a land for their tracker, which is normal. That's not true. They have a field of root in their hand. You can kill Tireless Tracker with it. We can kill Tireless Tracker now. I guess I guess that's the line. We have to give them another clue to do that, but it's probably still the line. All right, we're out of gas, but our health total is going to be relatively high. We've got their immediate source of card advantage off the table. Dark Petitioner season's passed away from still being in the game, so we have a game, as they say. Joke's on you, opponent. I don't got any thoughts to seize. Get out of here. See, very, very cleverly failed to draw any, uh, skillfully failed to draw spells. That way they couldn't thought seize us. Sick. Yes, yeah, our board counts as swamp. Everything, everything's a swamp. Read some bones to start. This is in fact a good pickup. Ooh. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely just keeping this, right? Just not close. We might, we might get to do the thing. I would like to do the thing, do da, do da, bum 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 bum. They're dead next turn. If they break off, they're gonna die. Please don't kill my dread presence. Do 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 do. -do. We are likely very dead. Do da, do da, bum 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 bum. And this is this is the problem, right? Like now I kept the escape shift, and the escape shift doesn't do anything once my dread presence dies. So like. You know, super dead. I kept a blank, basically. We're going to nine. I do have double Quagmire, so I can kill the Lovestruck Beast with my land through a blocker next turn, so that's appealing. I didn't. I just didn't believe Marty. You're right. Hey, we could draw. We could draw Dread Presence off the top and get the Scape Shift in there. Started. Thanks for the three quarters of a year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. If you're having a good one wherever you are. I mean, it wouldn't be Stone Rain. We'd get a land back, right? 
They just draw running dark petitions. Of course they drew running dark petitions. Baba, thank you for the 23 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. So I assume this is going to be season's best. Draw four cards, five cards, six cards, seven cards. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Dark Petition, Thoughtseize, Tireless Tracker. The opponent's inclusion of Lovestruck Beast in their Builder Suite. I like that a lot. There. It's there for the mirror. Yep. That was not the Dread Presence I needed to combo kill them. So I assume we're dead. I think you could probably play both, Marty. The fact that both Lovestruck Beast and Sylvan Advocate don't die to Languish is also a big game. We've ever said Qdoba was bad so much that it's just like worse than Chipotle. Qdoba. Qdoba's like Taco Bell quality at Chipotle prices. Just paid my rent with my holiday bonus. Life is good. Dealer's choice. Happy holidays. Remember, kids, Santa and Satan are anagrams of each other. Thanks for the bitty skin squad. I really appreciate it. Hope your Friday is going well. Thanks for sharing some of your bonus this way. All right, so I get to languish, and they can't currently get this to four, five toughness, so I at least get to kill that, so that's nice. Hail Santa. <laughs> so they played Tracker, they played Quagmire. They have Petition and Thoughtseize still. Have we given up on the format entirely? Yeah, I think so, Singer. I want to have a question on the end of year sub survey about it, but I haven't really enjoyed playing Mono the last few times we played it, and I've really been enjoying Pioneer and Historic and Standard, so making, making time to play a format that hasn't been fun doesn't seem like a good use of my time. If there is a huge resounding response from subscribers that they want to see some modern, I could be convinced to add one or two good decks per week. Morning, Smed. But yeah, look for look for the sub survey after Christmas. Probably send it out on the 26th. That's close enough to the end of the year. I don't know. I just feel like there's enough people that there's enough people that like do try hard modern content that like me doing try hard modern content like is outside my wheelhouse. Yeah, one of one of one of the questions on the sub survey is basically going to be if I stop doing modern content, does that make you more likely to keep subbing, less likely to keep subbing, or indifferent. So, that basically, unless unless there is a large resounding, I'm going to stop subbing because you dropped modern, I'm probably not going back to modern. I think there's a good chance that a lot of people, well, there's going to be a good number of people that say it's more likely. So, yeah. Ba basically, and, and to just be above the board with how my schedule is going to work, any modern I would be adding would be replacing pioneer content because there's only so many hours in the week and I try to basically balance my stuff between so much MTGO and so much arena. So fitting modern in requires cutting pioneer content. Yep. 
You. Yeah, I, I feel like that's probably the case, Enya. I don't know. I haven't, like, I've still been doing some modern, so I don't know that, like, people realize that, like, I'm trying to move away from doing it altogether. Yeah, I, I agree with that Pokemon. And, and that, that, that includes me, right? Like, what, what Pioneer feels like right now is, like, what I was trying to find in modern for a long time. That game was just a really good example of the fact that in pseudo mirror matches like this, being the one to find your dark petitions in your season's past puts you pretty far ahead. A couple of people are asking about legacy. Legacy content's just not popular. Excuse me. People, people largely watch magic content, in my experience, for formats that they play. And most people are priced out of playing Legacy. So there isn't, there isn't a demand for Legacy content. I've done, I've done Legacy stuff in the past. And part of the reason why, why I, I moved off of it is largely, largely because of a popularity issues. And again, there's only so many hours in the day. Need one more trim here. I'm gonna trim this escape shift. I just don't wanna draw it. Yeah, Ashiok's not only good for turning off their petitions, but it uh, it also exiles their graveyard to make their seasons pass bad. So I think Ashiok's actually quite good here in this mirror. Sam sounds fine. I think we're going to bottom casualties of war. And as always, like, my thoughts on formats are subject to change based on as those formats change. Like Magic tends to be a pretty fluid game. And like as Wizards decides to sculpt things in different directions, things can definitely ebb and flow. But like, I can't, I can't understate, I, I can't overstate how popular Pioneer content has been. Like even, even at like, I, I'd have to go back and look at, look at when I tweeted it, but I gated Pioneer decks behind tier three subs or $50 donations like weeks ago at this point. And I am just now barely getting the queue down, down to where, down to being small. Which, speaking of, I'll be opening Pioneer submissions back up for $25 submissions, uh, probably after Christmas is my plan. So on the, on the 26th. I've wanted to get into playing Paper Magic. What's the easiest way to get a paper deck together? I can't. Just buying singles, Party Bus CEO. So Cool Stuff Inc. is actually one of my sponsors. They have a Jeff 5 code, DNA 5% discount on their website. But any of the major vendors, I'd encourage you to. Most of them most of them tend to be pretty competitive in their pricing, Cool Stuff Inc. included. So just like most of the good websites uh, have a place where you can just like paste in a list of cards and like auto import to the cart. It's my favorite Pioneer deck so far. Definitely, um, definitely Blue Red Eldrazi. And I actually, actually, speaking of favorite Pioneer decks and Cool Stuff Inc., I actually had an article get published on Blue Red Eldrazi on Cool Stuff Inc. Uh, this week, last week, recently. Last week, I think it was. Cletus is dead, Jim. You've killed him. <sighs> I don't know. Maybe I'm supposed to hold this. Let's just try and guaranteed get a card out of it. It's like don't have a land in sight. Just have time to drop off my sub. Got to run to work, but I enjoyed the Abzan Doom deck. I'm glad I get to catch everything on YouTube later. Thanks for the 10 months, Blue. I appreciate it. 
Yeah, actually, uh, if you don't follow me on Twitter, I tweeted a draft of the Abzan Doom Deck Splashing Mayhem Devil last night. And I think we're going to attempt at some point in the future. Need to, need to sit down and figure out a standard deck in the first couple weeks of January for the MCQ. Oh, that's a good suggestion, Durka. Make a note to do that. Add link to URL Eldrazi article to website page. That'll get done this evening. Yeah, I agree, I smoke. I think I think every banning has pushed pushed that archetype in favorable directions. So, rewarded for holding the swamp there. Get to draw a card off it with Dread Presence. Syndication, thanks for the two months. I appreciate you sending your Prime back this way again. Happy Friday, happy holidays. That's an uh, interesting decision. Oh, they're killing this in response. Okay. I was like, oh, they're giving me a swamp and letting me draw another card. They're triggering revolt and then killing this. Good good sequencing here on the opponent's part. So they the field of rune has already left play, so they've triggered revolt. And now they let the field resolve so this way I don't get to draw another card with my dread presence. So take play there from the opponent. Actually gonna go ahead and just grasp this, I think. I'm gonna line of the trophy in case they have a planeswalker or something, but I think just keeping my health total high here has some value to it, especially with the second removal spell in my hand. Maybe I'm supposed to hold on to the Hissing Quagmire again here, just in case I draw Tracker or Dread Presence. They have Urborg in play, so it's a Swamp. The upside to playing it out is, if I draw Seasons Pass, it lets me cast Seasons Pass. Wow, we actually got a hit with that. I almost didn't cast it. Like there could be some merit to holding it till I draw a threat, but it feels good. I'm gonna trophy this. I don't wanna cash in the Quagmire on it because then if I draw Seasons Pass or Dark Position, I can't cast Seasons Pass. I'm gonna hang on to this in case I draw Dread Presence or Tireless Tracker. Upside is pretty high. I think I'm gonna hang on to Quagmire for now. Holding, holding, trading Quagmires here only saves me one point of damage per combat because then they get to start attacking with their 1-1. I'm going to go ahead and play this tap land out. No need to hold two lands, I don't think. Especially when my land I'm holding is a Fabled Passage. It's going to trigger landfall twice. Yep. There's like waiting on a Seasons Pass or Dark Petition here on both sides. Hey, thanks for the 16 months, Mage Cub. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. My opponent's tap playing scries. Rude. Not, not so useful. 
Maybe I am trading Quagmire at this point. I've taken quite a few hits. Yeah, I feel like I am. I've drawn a lot of lands. Maybe we've both drawn a lot of lands. Cause it's a sneepa keepa do 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 sneepa pa keepa pa do 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 be do 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 do. All right, so next turn we're gonna be able to dark petition, get seasons past, cast seasons past. We'll get to pick back up, hissing quagmire, thought seize, trophy. Tracker Kalitas or Tracker Dread Presence? Probably Tracker Dread Presence. We'll get to be the one to top deck the uh, the old Dark Petition first this game. That one. Get back this, 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 this. Ring a ding ding. Hell you. The old draw six. See, again, like, I don't. I don't even need, like I boarded the scape shift out because when I draw six with the seasons pass, that wins the game in these matchups. Yeah, Seasons Pass grabs land. We pick back up uh, Hissing Quagmire as a creature land. So we had we had lands in our bin to get back already. That is true. Seasons Pass goes to the bottom of your library is is in fact a win condition. Sure. Again, like lands and spells are mostly keeps in these matchups where players are playing discard spells. Cards like cards like Thoughtseize discourage you from making good mulligan decisions. Just because like mulliganing for better spells and a six card hand and then getting Thoughtseize means you're just like worse off than your seven. So you're pretty much always better off just like keeping your hand that's like mostly functional and then hoping for the best. Oh gosh. If this is a fun of seasons pass. They don't, if they don't have another season's pass, that could be game winning. Oh, they don't currently have the colors to cast, uh, to cast Ashiok, do they? Uh, there are a lot of variations in standard mana symbol. So like, for example, the Abzan variation that I top aided uh, an SCG open with, was leaning on cards like Sylvan Advocate and Plane Walkers to finish the game off. Yep.
think I just killed our Ashiok here. I get to kill my Vraska, but I think that's fine. They have a fatal push that I know about. I get to spot check through now, which is nice. I got stone cold nothing, huh? I think I'm just doing this. Like, if I if I randomly draw, if I play Kalitas, they like draw a removal spell, we're in a pretty bad spot. So I think I'd rather not take that risk. This cuts off uh Dark Petition as an out for them. Couple more random cards off him. Um. I'm gonna go ahead and pass here, I think, and I'm gonna try and hissing quagmire to kill this Kalitas. Yep, they don't have a way to attack through this, they just can't attack. We're two turns off of ulting our Liliana. So they need to find an answer to Lily or Quagmire here. Yeah, the ult minus seven on her. This is just not a matchup where they can beat uh, endless zombies. Weird that they... So they must have something else here, right? They have Dark Petition too? God, that's brutal. Those are, those are a savage last two cards. Vomit. I think there's value, milling. Yeah, that's why I've been milling them. Oh, they don't get the mana. You're right, because we've been exiling their graveyard. Sick. Okay, so they're dead. Sick, I forgot. I forgot they didn't have spell mastery. I would like some friends. My opponent has conceded from the game. Yeah, feels good, man. Perfect draw game. Noted.
and get, get added in after the stream today as always. Thanks for making my mornings more exciting with fresh magic content. Thanks for re-upping your prime this way. Stern, I appreciate you keeping me employed here. Welcome back. Um, I guess. Just getting ready to head home for the holiday. We'll be watching the stream in style on the big screen. Happy holidays, so Glandia. Hey, twin. Thanks for the biddies. Happy Friday. Commune, Fiery Impulse. So they're playing uh, Just Guy Ascendancy combo. Our slew of abrupt decay should be great here. Commune with the gods is a neat one. Let's them dig five deep for an enchantment. A lot, of, a lot of looks for your, your key card. Thoughtseize. Thoughtseize decks are hard matchups for the JAC archetype, especially in a post, uh, post Veil world. Where's our Lost Legacy? So we have a spot. Our Lost Legacy is unfortunately in the sideboard. Cast Borderland Ranger. So she gets a forest out of our deck. She's just gonna die to a fiery impulse. It's whatever. Ain't nobody got ain't nobody got time for anything else. Hey, we'll catch you New Year's week then immortal. Safe travels and all that jazz. Trophy's a great draw. Do you have a questing beast on the sideboard of JAC? What problem are you solving with that card? God, is the charm is brutal. Maybe I'm supposed to wait a turn to play around that. Yeah, maybe I'm supposed to wait a turn to play around that. Since this is like my only resource. I don't know. Is the charm's probably gonna get something at some point though? Like our deck's so full of clunky and expensive spells. Uh, the opponent's likely playing Jeskai Ascendancy combo. They're a combo deck that puts the card uh, Jeskai Ascendancy into play and then casts the card Sylvan Awakening. If you want to see an approximate deck list, you can check my website under the, the Pioneer section. There's videos in the deck list up there as always. I think I'm eating a land at this point. It's got so many. Yeah, that's true too. Running running into the charm does have value just because it means they're not digging with it. Morning, silliest buddy. Or just like looking for a dig through time or a or an ascendancy. I guess they do kind of got to play through this Vraska now. Yeah, there's so many basic swamps this deck, Marty. I didn't have all matching basics on, on Moto. Yeah, kind of, Percy. 
So no. There's always another Tron deck, right? How many basic lands does the JAC deck usually run? Often three to four. A lot of the builds play... Um, a lot of the builds play the card uh, Attune with the Aether, which means they need basics to find with that. Hey, Kate Trojan. Thanks for the two-month resub there. I appreciate you coming back. Hope you're having a wonderful Friday wherever you're at in the world. If you're folks here that enjoy some Pioneer stuff, we're going to be doing three different Pioneer decks today. You can see in the stream title. I think the, my plan is to do a minimum of two Pioneer decks every morning until the new set drops. When the new set drops, we'll do a bunch of standard at the very beginning. But until until then, we're mostly mostly all in on the pioneers. Format seems great. Yeah, yeah. There's the the mono green devotion deck. Oh, you're talking about the the ramp deck with Ugin and Ulamog, right? Yeah, yeah. That that archetype's way harder than Oko ever was for mid range decks to keep up with. Big agree there. So, my opponent has, my opponent has seven lands, or six lands, which means if I tap off of this Assassin's Trophy, they could theoretically combo kill us next turn. They could go uh, untapped land, JAC, Sylvan Awakening, uh, play a one mana spell, untap their stuff, attack. So that's, that's rough. I think I'm just supposed to go field pass here and just wait a turn so I can hold up trophy. Well, I take new historic decks after Theros releases two. Even if you play them in best of three events for the ladder. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, doing, doing best of three events is fine compared to the ladder Gengar. It's about a wash. Ja January is... Um, January is a new ladder season that I have to care about anyways, so I'll probably be playing a variety of decks on in constructed events, even in standard, just because I'm going to want to try and finish in the top 1200 of the ladder in January. Is Trophy their white source consideration? No. Saving, saving Trophy for J8, the Ascendancy is much better than trying to be cheeky with their mana. I think it's unlikely they have two planes, but using my resource that literally stops them from comboing on a land is very foolish. Don't don't be cute. Gotta get those Zach bits, right? Yeah, I think my... We'll see We'll see what day of the week Theros drops on. I think set releases are usually like Thursdays. Usually usually they do the, uh, the pre-release thing on, uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday or Tuesday and then they take Wednesday off for some reason. Then release on release on Thursday. Haste creature would be good next turn. You're not you're not wrong. Like to draw a card. I think I'm just blessing this and doing nothing again. Kind of want my lands at this point with the Dark Petition. Dread Presence threatens to kill them next turn with Fraska. 
Hopefully this trophy keeps us alive. Another dig through time here, I assume. Would not be surprised if they have another fiery impulse with which to kill this dread presence. Good. The good news is here, because I kept the dark petition, or because I kept my land this turn, even if they like try to go for the combo next turn, I can trophy their ascendancy, keep them from killing us, and, and then we can petition for an abrupt decay and hold abrupt decay up on seven lands. Yeah, but even if they have a backup ascendancy, they're going to need an extra turn to deploy it. They need second ascendancy and second, uh, second Sylvan Awakening. Yeah, I believe the Ascendancy on our deck, um, I believe the Ascendancy deck on my website has three non-forest basics in it, just, just, just sky basics. Again, mostly to search up with, uh, Tune with the Aether. Well, this is, this is my end step, Mazer Mouse. So they can, they can untap and attempt to combo us if they want. Uh, I don't think we've played a Cav Fire Dex in Historic yet. As always, you check check the website in the YouTube. We play a lot of things. And a lot of a lot of these decks in different formats are close enough that the format blurs sometimes. So I don't I don't think so, but I'm not that's not a 100 percent I don't think so. He's dead, Jim. You've killed him. Me casting another dig. You can play teamer fires in historic. We're gonna try teamer fires and pioneer later today. First crack at it in a post oko world in this format. Third digs the charm, chat. Next turn, we'll probably run back the play we made this turn, which is Dread Presence, land, draw a card, plus Braska, do nothing, pass. They're probably halfway through the planet or so by now with all their digging. The good news is every creature we put into play at this point is lethal, so they have to kill all of them. Thanks to, uh, thanks to Lady Braska here threatening an emblem. Old, old double-digit loyalty planeswalker. The consideration to alting Vraska is going to emblem they can't direct with. Yeah, probably next turn. I wanted to get Vraska to a point where I could emblem her, but then also have her threaten to destroy an Ascendancy. Because so long as she's above three, they can't just deploy an Ascendancy and pass. Why not petition for Thoughtseize and leave Trophy open? Why do you think petitioning for Thoughtseize is better than putting Lethal on the table? Why do you why do you think getting a second piece of disruption is better than putting lethal on the table? Ooh, that's actually a good suggestion. 
Yeah, I think I think Ashiok's right that rather than drawing a card, I should have just put the Hissing Quagmire into play. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was the better line. I should have left this in hand. I was so focused on drawing a card with this trigger that yeah, playing playing Quagmire was much better than playing the swamp. Definitely, definitely should have dread presenced Quagmire there. So that way I have two things that threaten to kill them with Fresco's emblem next turn. Was not, was not thinking about that. I can only imagine how many enchantments they have in their hand at this point. It's got to be a lot, right? So there's there's part of their combo. In response to Sylvan Awakening, we're going to Assassin's Trophy this. And if they have um, if they have is it Charm Untapped Land one mana spell, I'm actually dead here. So if they have untapped land, one mana spell they can cast, we actually lose the game. Because all of their lands are about to become creatures. So if they can play and cast a one, if they can cast a one mana non-creature spell, they'll get to untap everything. Yep, yeah, I assume we're dead here. This game really felt like a phenomenal example of you can't just have a bunch of disruption. You need to actually be killing your combo opponents. Also, also kind of worth noting that the fact that this was our one Assassin's Trophy and not one of our three copies of Abrupt Decay was super relevant there, huh? If that, if that had just been the other one, they wouldn't have been able to counterspell us there and win the game. Need to bring two more cards in here. Davriel's probably fine. Empties their hand. Kali tosses a 3-4. None of the rest of these seem particularly exciting or good. Oh, Damping Sphere. Yeah. I agree with that. It's better than Kalitas. What is Scapeshift for? For a soft combo with Dread Presence. I don't think it's particularly good. This this part of this deck feels like it's just too cute. This feels feels like it's taking a deck that's already kind of fringe and like. Adding an element to it that's that's kind of kind of weak overall. This is a viewer submission car. So if you if you asked me to build my preferred seasons past, I wouldn't have started with these cards. And after after playing with them, definitely don't think they're ideal. I like gave the deck a once over and like changed some of the bullets in the sideboard, but the core of this is a viewer submission. Like most of the things we play. Last opponent, this opponent played that last game really well. They took forever to do it. They played, took them 12 and a half minutes to play that game, but they ended up getting in the right lines. You're not wrong, Percy. That's definitely, that's definitely a feature of 
what people do when building decks. They take a deck that's already tier two, cut some of the cards from it, and then make it worse by adding, shoving in this other little package. I would like to thought seize your land. Ooh, Walking Ballista sounds like a good suggestion. I like that one. I have a preferred Seasons Pass list. I do not. We've not played it on. This is our first time playing it on stream. Life. Life has been hectic and the stream has been busy, so if it's not something I'm playing on stream, I'm basically not working on it in terms of magic. Do you have any thoughts on Fire of Invention in general? Or so far, does it depend too much on the deck surrounding it and whether or not it's good or bad? I mean, like, Fire of Invention is an incredibly powerful card. You watch us. If you watch us or listen to, like, things I've said on stream recently, like... There's it, basically every time we played the deck, you hear me talk about the things that make it good. Being being able to leverage a lot of mana from it is key. So like having immediately another four mana card to play and then like four and five mana cards to play the turn after. Fires, Fires of Invention is at its best when you're making 10 mana with it on turn five. That's, that's the power behind that card. So the breeding pool here means they can deploy Monastery Mentor while leaving Spell Pierce up, but I have Abrupt Decay, so. Uh, you can play Sanctum of Ugandurka. So I'm going to stop on my opponent's turn here and Abrupt Decay this on their turn. The reason why I'm Abrupt Decaying it on their turn is it makes them spend the blue mana then. And it'll mean the monk token that they make can't attack Davriel, which is ideal. Or even more than 10 mana per C. Like that's the reason why the Cavalier Fire decks are so good. Is because they're making they're making like 14 mana on turn five by activating the Cavalier twice. Hey, thanks for your spirits. I appreciate the 11 months. Have a good rest. No, I don't think I will pay for the spell pierce. Thank you very much. We'd love to draw a swamp next turn. So we can just like drop Dread Presence, have Dread Presence shoot the monk. All right, what'd you draw? Goodbye. All right, this game should be pretty over at this point. Davriel and Dread Presence are both blocking them rather quickly, and Dark Petition's gonna grab Lost Legacy and take away their copies of Ascendancy next turn. Could, they could draw another Pierce or an Isitrim here to stop the, the Lost Legacy, but... Otherwise, we're in a pretty good spot regardless, I think. So we just have a relatively quick clock. Ashiok's not bad either. So we'll make dig, dig through time, not do anything next turn. So 
So Lost Legacy is like a mono black Unmoored Ego, except it can't name artifacts or lands. It's a little bit worse in that way. But it doesn't require a color that we don't have. I think this matchup is probably pretty good for our deck on average. We have a lot of good tools here. Yeah, Urborg, Urborg Dread Presence is a soft, soft combo. Easy mulligan here, no disruption. Easy keep. Yeah, Dale, the JAC deck is one of the many decks you can find up on my website with my current preferred deck list as well as videos of me playing it. I think I take Ascendancy to start here and then probably Thought Seize the Dig, just try and leave them stranded with the Awakening. I don't recall Neckfire. I don't. Maybe we go through so many decks that I don't. I don't have a log of who submits what. Or I have a log technically, but I don't have it handy. And the log's long enough that filtering through it takes a lot of time. <sighs> well, shoot. Magic sucks and then you die, chat. I think I'm just going to take Sylvan Awakening here. Nah, nah I'm just going to take the dig through time. Feels, feels bad, but... Yeah, they have... They hit strategic planning too to like enable the first dig. Yeah, so a soft combo. So when I say when I describe something as a soft combo, another another way to phrase it could be that the cards have synergy together. Soft soft combo is another way to say they're just synergistic. Whereas like a hard combo ends the game the turn you execute the combo. They draw, is it charm? Are they just digging? Probably just digging, sure. Hoping for Abrupt Decays, Lost Legacies, Thought Seizes, stuff like that. Uh, build around submissions for Arena are $25. 2,500 bits. He's still legal here, isn't he? Still, still legal, eh, Tefrim? Oh, you know what? I should have, I should have played the forest there because uh, I have Dread Presence in my hand. That's actually a pretty big mistake. Hey, DJ Jedi Jeff, thanks for the two years of support. It's a long time. December, I was actually just like looking back at my metrics over the last two years and December of two years ago was when I was just starting to uh, turn this into something more than a hobby. It's been a wild ride, champ. Got a 
couple of sequencing decisions here I could make. I think it's Dread Presence, play Fabled Passage. And then I'm going to fetch during their upkeep and try and kill this Monastery Mentor. Hey, Neo, thanks for the support. I appreciate it. I'll get that added to the queue after we're all done today. Yeah, Mentor. Mentor looks real good here for them. For sure. Maybe we're lucky and they don't have an instant. I think they were trying to Sylvan Awakening there, but their Teferi's worn off at this point. That's why we did it during their upkeep. My sequencing on my lands is going to come back to bite me here. If I would have played this out the turn I played the connections, I'd have another swamp to play next turn. But I need to play. I need to play a forest next turn now. This is really cute. So they, they spell pierce their own thing, so that way they could, uh, they could have Fiery Impulse kill my Dread Presence. Opponents played this match really well. They've played glacially slow, but they've made good decisions. Well, definitely starting here, right? Creature, land, Planeswalker. Nah, nah, this isn't a stream where we're trying to make players sound better than they are. They've been slow, they haven't been deliberate. All right, so they can Sylvan Awakening here and hit me for eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and put me to three. Which seems pretty good. We're open to draw an untapped land next turn so we can go tracker, land, make a clue, Vraska, kill a monk. We get to do that. We could be in an okay spot. Sands a second uh, Sylvan Awakening peeled off the top. Down to three. Well. Hey, thanks for the nine months, Sword and Shield. I appreciate it. Welcome back. They definitely have a series of draws that kill me here, right? Like can trip into uh into another 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 prowess trigger kills me. Yep. So if there's a non-creature spell on top of their deck, we're dead. Yeah, that was a close set. I think I could have maybe made some different decisions in the first game there. I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be done with this one. Um, this archetype as a whole feels okay, even if it's kind of glacial to win games with. Uh, the the Dread Presence scape shift was just, just basically hot nonsense. Dread Presence, while it offered some useful utility in some spots, 
it um it felt like a clunkier tireless tracker in a format where tireless tracker already struggles to be relevant and any game where scape shift would have won us the game with dread presence we were winning anyways just because we were so far ahead in the spot where that was working so well, I feel like there's probably something to this like black green controlling style deck. I think adding more clunk in the trunk here with cards like this doesn't doesn't seem doesn't seem ideal. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit a quick ad roll while we get set up for the next deck. We have two more pioneer decks coming up today. They're actually both Fires of Invention deck. So we're going to play a little bit more uh, Just Kai Fire Planeswalkers with the, the cheeky Bolov Splash here. And then we've got some Teamer Fires coming up after that with a more Cavalier style deck. So hit a quick ad roll, I guess, up for Just Kai Fires. We'll be back in a few. Thanks for hanging out, folks. And yeah, Mark, feel free to just uh, 